Today, we have a Ministry Spotlight interview with Diane Easley, founder and director of Sue's Home. Today, you're going to hear how Sue's Home is impacting the Gulf Coast community by helping out the homeless. You're having coffee with Conrad. Conrad rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad from ConradRocks.net. Today is going to be a ministry spotlight interview with Diane Easley. She's the founder and director of Sue's Home. It's part of the Community Care Network in Ocean Springs, Mississippi. This is one of those rare gems we kind of stumbled across by divine providence. I love how God does that. It's interesting how he just orchestrates things. In this interview, you're going to hear how Sue's Home is helping women and children get back on their feet or get on their feet. They're finding and dealing with the spiritual roots of the problems of homelessness. And you're going to hear some testimonies, and you're also going to hear how you can get involved. All of the links that you need to know will be in the show notes. Without further ado, here is the Ministry Spotlight interview with Diane Easley from Sue's Home. We are happy coffee with Conrad. Hey everybody, do I have a treat for you today? I uh, met Diane Easley with Sue's Home, part of the Community Care Network. I decided to give her a call because she is impacting the community here on the Gulf Coast for uh, the homeless. How are you doing, Diane? I'm doing great, and thank you for calling me. Amen. Yeah, I got to speak to you yesterday. I'm so excited. And the way that we found you is um, a friend of ours told us about you, and we keep getting people give us uh, clothes for the homeless. And sometimes we get clothes for for women and children, and we really don't run into too many uh, homeless women and children when we're out and about sharing the gospel. And then you guys use that, right? We do. We do. And we're really grateful for that. Uh Um, We we feel that our primary calling, our ministry, is to have a change in a woman and child's life who are homeless, not just to provide emergency care for them, although that's needed in many cases. We have a program. Our facility is called Sue's Home. And we are a long-term transitional facility. The women and their children reside in the home for six to nine months because it's really important that we not put a Band-Aid on a problem, that they're here long enough for us to help them delve into with spiritual counseling and with a lot of assistance from the Lord to delve into what, what caused this, what kind of poor choices. And many of them were set up from living in dysfunctional homes as children. And there's a lot of pain there that will cause a woman to make bad choices. And that involves a lot of very innocent kids. But a lot of those women were those children. And there wasn't someone to step in the gap for them. And so we feel called to provide a place for them where they can have safe housing, but at the same time develop the life skills that they need to move forward in life. Um, I tell them when they come in the door because it's a beautiful home. It wasn't when we when we found it. It was a derelict property that had been abandoned, and with a lot of help from the Christian community, it took us ten months with all volunteers and donated material to turn this into a, a beautiful facility. And when they come in, it's like, oh, this is wonderful. And I tell them, well, this is the honeymoon part. Sooner or later, you're going to hit the wall, and that's when the real real work begins because we've got to find out the root causes of, of what's going on in your life. And so that's what Sue's Home is. It's long-term. We help them get a job. We help them go to GED classes or go back to school. We've had some women in the community college system now and even had one that came back, one wonderful young woman that came back to work for us who was originally one of our clients. Um, wow. So that's what that's what Sue's Home is about. And we have some other programs that I can tell you about later also. Okay. Now, how, how does someone get 
in to what's a candidate for Sue's home? How do they end up there? Well, it's actually, we'd love to say we could take men too, but we will refer them and help them find someplace. But our facility is for women and women and children. We have single women here. We have some women who are hoping to for their children to rejoin them. They may be in child protective custody, but once we provide a safe place for them and we can show stability, then their children can join them. Um, that way they can learn to parent them with supervision. So a candidate for our program is, is a woman who finds herself homeless or is going to be homeless, you know, imminently, maybe from being um, evicted from an apartment. Because a lot of these ladies are in minimum wage jobs. Uh, if they get laid off or get sick and can't go to work, they're going to be evicted. And so we also have a program that we can help them. If this isn't the appropriate place and they're able to get back to work and we can help pay their rent a month or two, we depend on donations for that. You know, God's people have just been incredible, but we turn more people away than we're able to serve, and that's heartbreaking. It's really difficult to tell a woman who slept in a car last night that I don't have a place for her. Right. And we could double our capacity if we had the funding. Now, you know, one of the things that as we go out and minister the gospel to people, I, I, I'm always talking about Matthew six thirty three. you know, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his ways of doing things right, and these things will be added unto you. Well, how does someone, like, uh, when they're about to be homeless, what are some of the fundamental problems that puts them there? Well, some of them have previous they have addiction problems sometimes. Okay. Now, we're not a treatment program. Um, about a third of our clients, though, have been in a residential treatment program like Home of Grace or some other facility, and they're smart enough to know I don't need to go back where I was. I need the second step. So that's where we come in. We're like step two. Um, some of them have addiction problems. Some of them have are are really dealing and running from the pain of a very dysfunctional or abusive childhood, which causes them to make a lot of bad choices as a young adult. And so that's an issue that we deal with. Um, It all has a spiritual basis, but a lot of times they don't recognize that. We have to get them here, get them comfortable, let them learn to trust us, because, you know, unfortunately, some of our clients have a big chip on their shoulder, Uh, they think they know how church people are going to treat them. And unfortunately, sometimes it's the church folks that put the chip there. Yeah. And we just have to keep, I hate to say it, but it is. Yep. They, you know, if they walk into a, a, a church, they may not look like us, they may not smell like us, they may be covered in tattoos, or they may, I mean, we have women here who have had careers and come from fine families and just get off base. And so a lot of people think they know what the homeless look like, but they really don't because sometimes they don't look like you expect. And sometimes they do. Many times women self medicate when they're running away from pain and abuse. And we see that on a daily basis. Okay. Now let me ask you this. You're the founder and director of Sue's home, right? Uh huh. Okay. How did you, get this passion? I mean, why are you doing this? <laughs> well, I, I'm a nurse. I taught nursing school for a number of years. And then I was asked to be on the board at a faith-based agency, the Home of Grace. And I just, it just, it immediately grabs me. Within a year, I was the director of the women's program there. And I, I served in that capacity for nine years. And I just began to see that we had clients who were there for three months and did really well, but then when they got out, it didn't stay that way. And I saw the need for another step. And I really was going to do it just volunteering at different places. So I retired, I thought, from that job, and I found out I don't know how to retire. Um, I started immediately going to the jails and doing Bible studies. And I saw the same thing there. I saw people who didn't have a place to go when they got out 
So they were going to take the path of least resistance and go back to where they knew. And so Sue's Home and Community Care Network was birthed out of that, a, a real burning desire to provide a place of safety and security um, and a faith-based place so that we could minister to them and they could learn to trust again and learn to actually not just trust the Father, but trust themselves in his care. Because when that's been totally obliterated and beaten down, it's very hard to build back and it takes a long time. So about a third of our clients have come from a treatment program. About a third maybe have come from different histories of incarceration. And then about a third are literally what I call the working poor. I mean, they cannot, a mom with a couple of children working 20 hours a week at a minimum wage job is not going to make it. Right. So we provide that cushion while she's trying to reevaluate and, and we give them some direction in, in how to do better and, and um, change the trajectory of their life. That's kind of how it all came about. It's been 15 years. And it seems like yesterday. What's the trend? I mean, when we go to Ocean Springs, uh, we don't see too many homeless people there. I think they're at the piers a lot. And some of the stories that we get is they get run off. <laughs> it does happen. Yes. I mean, nobody wants But a lot of what people see and, and actually think are homeless are more panhandlers that move around. Okay. Um, they're really not homeless. They're out there at Walmart and different places with signs, and they they may have a place to live. We found that out right. in quite a few cases, but they're just collecting money. Those that are truly homeless, we are part of a coalition um, called the Open Doors Homeless Coalition, and we have a big push to house those that are truly homeless and have had over 100 people housed in the last year through that. How many? 100 people? people? That's all. That's awesome. Over 100 on the coast. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, but that's a lot of agencies working together. We come together every month and share resources. We, I was at a meeting this morning talking about homeless youth because what we found is there's been a 300% increase in 18 to 24-year-olds, a lot of them aging out of foster care or of the criminal justice system, and they have nowhere to go. And when you're 18, it's very hard to even get on a lease. So we have we have a 100-day challenge right now among some different agencies to try to focus on that age group. We at Community Care Network have already housed seven. You don't see them very often because they may be couch surfing, but as soon as they have a fuss with somebody, they're thrown out, and they go from place to place to place. So, like I said, sometimes the homeless don't, they're not hanging out at the parks like you think they are. Okay. Now, you were talking about some of the kids coming out of foster care, and I noticed that you were interviewed Mm by, uh, there was a a write-up in the Sun-Herald about you recently that talked about you're helping kids transition from foster care to warm apartments in South Mississippi. That's part of the uh, Mm -hmm. uh, description. Uh and I was going that's to ask, our breakthrough program. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you about the breakthrough. <laughs> that's they, they're not housed here at Sue's home. We really feel like they don't need to be put in a facility at their age. They need to, you know, have a case manager and a lot of resources around them that help them get back to school or. Over, you know, it's really a problem because especially a female, you let her be 18 and end up in one of the homeless camps. We're going to be dealing with human trafficking, abuse, addiction. And so we really feel very led to try to prevent those problems by helping them get into an apartment and having a case manager that visits with them, finds out where the deficit is. I mean, we've, we've had one young lady that was in 15 foster homes. Wow. Throughout her lifetime, she was one angry young woman, you know, but yeah. she's doing well now, but it took a lot of work. And well, that's what we, we, we are desperately looking for mentors among the Christian community to step up for young men and young women who could meet with them 
and come alongside them and, I mean, essentially disciple them very closely because some of them have their guard up, but help them meet the everyday challenges that they don't know how to meet. Amen. Can you uh, uh, share a couple of testimonies that come to mind about, you know, some success stories? Uh, Well, I can tell you one. As I mentioned before, we had a client who came in that had come from a a treatment program. Her entire family did a lot of drugs, and they still do. Um, She stayed in our facility for eight months. She went back to school, got her GED. We got to go to her graduation. She'd never completed anything in her life. Mm -hmm. Came to know the Lord and met a wonderful young man. She's married now and has a child, and she's got another one on the way. She's coming back to visit today. She'd already called Amanda when she could come over. And she works for us for about six months. She's one of our night managers. It's just wonderful to see somebody that really, she saw herself as hopeless. She truly did because she'd been beaten down so much. She doesn't now, and she's just a friend. And it's really cool to see someone who was a client now who is who is a friend. And we keep we keep those boundaries up while they're here, but then we love it when afterwards we're able to go to church with someone or visit with their kids and that kind of thing. So that's been that's been a joy. And then the lady that I told you about, um, that had been in the fifteen foster homes, she now owns her own home. And has a baby. Wow. And um, I I will tell you, I've learned after 25 years in this business of faith-based ministry, I, I do know this. I can't pick them. I don't know who's going to make it and who isn't. Because when this young woman came in, she was so angry and belligerent. And she will share her testimony. She is a sold-out Christian. And when she goes with me to speak at a church, we're always looking for churches that we can speak at to let women share their testimony and and let people see what God can do when we get out of the pews and leave the facilities and get out and touch people where they are. That she will tell people when she shares her story, uh, my job was to push you away before you turned on me because I knew you were going to. And they wouldn't stop loving me at Sue's home. Awesome. And when she said that, I just broke down and cried in front of the church that we were speaking at because she not said she hadn't said that to me. I, I really, I, I could see it now looking back because day one she walked in trying to push us away, but now she owns her own home and has a good job and is doing well. So, and that's not from being here. That's from them being here and submitting to what the Lord can do in their life. And that doesn't happen to everybody. We work with a very hard population. Um, As a staff, we get together and I tell them, we don't take credit when somebody makes it, and we try not to beat ourselves up when they don't. But we're human. We want them all to make it. They're not going to. But we may just be a stop along the way. And everything we do here. If we do it in love and do it as unto the Lord, they won't forget it. Amen. And that's what we're called to do. We're just called to minister to them and give them the tools that they didn't have when they walked in the door. That's awesome. I am so blessed because we have a wonderful staff of counselors and night managers that come in because we have to staff 24 hours a day. Every one of them could be making more money somewhere else. Well, it's a Everyone, moment. and they they choose to be here because they see it as their calling. Okay, Diane, I'm going to ask you to give your contact information. But if someone's interested in supporting what you do, um, how can they help you? How do you get um, your support? Well, we get our support from donations. Um, we have with the rental program where we're helping the youth. That is a small government program, but we won't take any money that ties our hands. We're a faith-based agency first and foremost. And so we depend on God's people stepping up and supporting this ministry. 
and and we know everybody isn't supposed to support this ministry. There are so many others doing good work. But Community Care Network is a nonprofit 501c3, so all donations are tax deductible. They can give directly through our webpage, which is www.ccnms.org, and there's a giving link that they can give. Um, we have some churches that put us in their budget. We just have three right now, and we serve the entire six lower counties. So we need much more. Like I said, it's horrible turning people away. And we could build another facility if we had the funds. So we depend on donations. Um, we take donations of goods also, but um, primarily financially is what our big need is. And our books are open. We are very open. Very little, very little of it goes to anything but direct client care. Uh, but it takes upwards of $15,000 a month now just to keep the doors open because there's such a need that we're meeting across the coast. Amen. So that's how people can help us financially. The biggest thing, too, is they can pray for us. It's a hard ministry. It's just like being a pastor at a church. It's very draining. And there are times we know that we're in a, well, we always know, but sometimes you feel it more than others that you're in a real spiritual battle. So we, we covet the prayers of Christian people. We would love to get in front of as many groups or organizations and, and tell them what we do. Also, they can come to Sue's home and take a tour. Uh, it's an amazing place to see, especially when we show them the pictures of what it looked like before. But that's our biggest need for support is on an ongoing monthly basis. We we just, we, if, if God's people don't support God's ministries, I don't believe the government is supposed to. I mean, I want them to make their commitment to their primary church, but we we all have to reach out to, to other ministries that are that are doing the boots on the ground work. Amen. All right, uh, I'm going to have you give the uh, your email. Uh, so people, if people have questions, what is your email? My email is Diane. That's D I A N E at C C N M S dot org. Okay. Now I'm going to have the link to your website, and uh, I'll have all of that in the show notes. So whoever's listening right now, if you didn't write that down, this will be in the show notes so you can contact Diane and ask her how you can support and get involved. Diane, it's uh, customary to have the guests pray us out. Um, Whatever's on your heart, just pray us out. It would be my privilege. Thank you. Father, in the holy name of your son, Jesus, we thank you for the privilege of doing this work. God, I know that you never give up on any of us, and I am so, so grateful. Father, thank you for the privilege of of this podcast and being on it, and and I thank you for the awesome work that you're doing in so many ministries across the coast. Lord, please guide and direct our step. Don't let us run ahead of you or behind you. Father, we want to be right dead center in the middle of your will, and and I beg for that, that you will keep our eyes on you. I thank you for what you've done in this organization and how I've seen it grow. And and I thank you that when we get to tomorrow, Father, you're there. And you know what we're going to be facing. And you know what clients are going to be calling. And you know what their needs are. And I just ask you right now to make them so evident to us that we will be there for them. I thank you for the privilege of walking with you daily, and I and I earnestly beg you to help me keep my feet on the right path and going in only the direction you want this ministry to go in, Father. Don't let us do it any other way, Lord. This is your place, and we are grateful just to get to watch. In your Son's precious and most holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Diane Easley with Sue's home in Ocean Springs, Mississippi, for having coffee with Conrad on conradrocks.net. God bless you. Thank you so much for calling. Have a good day. You okay. too.
Now, wasn't that awesome? God is up to something in the Gulf Coast of Mississippi. I love to highlight ministries that are actually making an impact in changing their community for Jesus Christ. Sue's Home is one of those ministries. Now, if you would like to help, you can connect with Diane. I'm going to provide the email that she said, and it's going to be in the show notes. I also have the links to their website and the article from the Sun-Herald, so you can read up on that. Homelessness is a problem all over the world. Now, I didn't intend to focus on homeless people as a ministry, but I've noticed that they're widely neglected. You know, the poor have the gospel preached to them. I hear that resonating throughout the scriptures. And, you know, they're overlooked mainly probably because they don't increase the tithe base. But Jesus says, what we've done to the least of these, we've done unto him. So if we turned a blind eye to the homeless, to the downtrodden, turned a blind eye to the hurting, it's like we're turning a blind eye to Jesus. So pray about getting involved. Um, If not, Sue's home, maybe your local shelters, maybe your local community outreach. Again, all the information in this podcast will be in the show notes. Please share this with your friends and family on social media, and I love your comments. God bless you till we meet again. Dig deeper and go higher. Dig deeper, go higher at comradrocks.net.